so recently, I accidentally two Power Mac G5s from someone in my neighborhood for the nice round price of $100 for the pair. I also happen to have a spare M.2 SSD lying around, so I picked up this inexpensive M.2 to SATA adapter. So let's install that into the better one of this pair of Power Macs, and while we're in there, we'll max out the RAM and make sure everything else looks okay. So both of these G5s are in working order, but if I had to pick a favorite, it would be this one. It's the PCI-X2 7.3 G5 from mid-2004, which is the dual G5 2 gigahertz processor model with the newer and more efficient PowerPC 970FX, while the other one has, uh, it's still dual processor, but it has two of the original 970s at just 1.8 gigahertz. Now, people either love or hate these machines, and for good reason. So there's a lot of reasons to love and a lot of reasons to hate these machines. I remember when these first were released back in June of 2003 at a totally reasonable $2,000. And I was totally blown away seeing these things in person at CompUSA, rest in peace. And at the time I was using a, probably a 450 megahertz Sawtooth G4 tower that I had bought in a thrift shop for like 50 bucks. And this seemed like a computer from five years in the future. I mean, it had a 64 bit processor compared to my lowly 32-bit sawtooth in this crazy aluminum enclosure with these two beautiful G5s in this dual processor model. Of course, it was just three years later that Apple completely abandoned the PowerPC architecture for Intel, uh, in the process making these super high-end computers completely obsolete. And that was one of the main gripes that people have with these machines, which is unfortunate. You know, people spent uh, minimum $2,000 up to $3,000 plus on these brand new hefty supercomputers. You could have bought one of these in 2005 and just a couple months later, it was completely obsolete and your $3,000 was gone. So I think people were rightfully quite upset with Apple about that. And there were a few other drawbacks, of course. Uh, these things were loud uh, especially because these G5 processors were not known for running cool. So there is a lot of trickery in this case, all different zones of cooling and crazy fast fans uh, to keep these very hot processors at a reasonable temperature. And then there was probably the biggest quality issue with these, and that was the last and greatest version of the Paramac G5 used a dual-core PowerPC processor, the only dual-core PowerPC processor ever put into a Mac, and that thing ran so hot, it necessitated a water cooling system from the factory. And that water cooling system inevitably broke down and leaked all over the inside of the computer and completely destroyed it. But there's a lot to love in these computers too. And in fact, I do really love them. Aside from this being the first a uh, 64-bit processor in an Apple computer. Uh, there was another big first in that this was the first and only Apple desktop to use SATA instead of IDE, which is much faster. And this also has a super fast one gigahertz system bus because this is the two gigahertz version of the computer. This one has eight RAM slots, an 8X AGP Pro slot for lots of good video card options. It has an 8X super drive, three PCI-X slots. It has both Firewire 800 back here and a Firewire 400 port up front, in addition to USB 2.0 ports all over the place. All right, let's uh, dig into this thing and upgrade it. So I love how ridiculously over-engineered these machines are, such as how to get into it 
there's this very heavy duty latch, which then releases the entire side plate, which is just completely solid aluminum. And then once you're inside of here, you have this really beautiful case with these uh, two covers covering the heat sink, uh, the heat sinks for the two processors. And you have this big plastic piece which comes out, which actually is what controls the zones of airflow through here. And fun fact, if you turn the machine on without this piece installed, the fans are just going to run full tilt the whole time. And then the fan actually comes out as one easy to remove piece. Which has a little connector on the end there. I mean, that is ingenious, beautiful design for things that the average user isn't even supposed to see. I mean, who did they expect to see the inside of this computer? Technicians, right? But yeah, beautiful. So the first thing we should really do is swap out this motherboard battery here. I'm sure that's the original. So I've got a new battery right here we'll swap in. And then next, let's pop out this RAM. And then I just want you to have a look at how they sent me the new RAM. I got this manila padded envelope in the mail and the sticks of RAM were basically just loose in there all jumbled up, wrapped in one single piece of plastic wrap. But they all look okay. Actually, one of them might be wrong. But let's install these. Okay, well that's disappointing. This one stick is not the right type of RAM, so we'll have to go with one of the original sticks. Fortunately, this original stick is also one gigabyte, it turns out, so I think we're fine. All right, let's put this adapter together. So this is made by Icy Dock, and it's actually a pretty nice little construction. Flips open nice and easily. And technically, we don't even have to screw that in there. There's a nice little catch back here, and then when you snap this thing shut, it holds it in place. And then it looks like the screws provided are really, you know, they're just to be your mounting screws. So now the question is, what's the best way to mount this thing in there? because there is no actual bracket that you can screw this to. Instead, the hard drive just kind of snaps in place on this track here and is held in by this little nifty latch deal right here. So I think we're just going to have to do the dangle method. There we go. Nice and professional. And we'll just flick this down so we know there's a drive in the A slot. And now we'll have two drives. We'll run the OS off of this, I think 500 gig drive and put all of our cool stuff there and just have a little secondary drive for deep storage. All right, let's get this thing back together, fire it up and hope it works. All right, let's turn this on and see what happens.
Hey, we're alive. All right, and we booted into our Leopard install. Let's see what kind of RAM we've got. Seven gigs. Well, I guess there are two 512s that made it into that bunch. I'll worry about that later, but eh, seven gigs, not too bad. We'll max it out to eight. I'm sure I have two more one gig sticks somewhere. But in the meantime, we should install a fresh install of Leopard onto our SSD. But first, let's make sure that the SSD is actually working and we might as well format it now, if it is. And no, it does not seem to be recognized. Well, that's a shame. Let's pull this out and see what's wrong with it. So I took out that M.2 SSD and tried it in another machine in an adapter and also tried hooking that enclosure directly up to that machine. And unfortunately, it seems like my M.2 SSD is dead. So I have the next best thing, which is a, a brand new PNY 120 gig drive, which is a far cry from the 500 gigs I was hoping for, but this will do. So let's start up the machine. This is already installed and we'll see what happens. All right, that's actually a good sign. It sees that disc inserted, not readable, so let's initialize it. And there it is, 111.8 gigs. So we'll just partition this guy with a single partition. So next I'll hook up my external firewire enclosure with an SSD in it. Uh, on here I have uh, several different partitions, each with a different Mac OS installer. So I will plug this into the Firewire 800 port on the back of the G5 and we'll boot into a Leopard install. All right. Agree. And we're gonna to install to the G5 SSD. Easy enough. All right, this doesn't look good. No Apple logo, nothing. So let's restart this and hold option for our boot menu. Well, something weird's going on. Let's shut this down and unplug the Firewire drive. Okay, so now we're booted off of our uh, Firewire drive, the Tiger live partition, and I'm trying to restore the original hard drive to the SSD to see if we can just make it bootable that way. And I've gone through all of the RAM and reseeded it. And funny enough, now we show eight gigs of RAM. So I wonder if maybe that was the problem. So we'll just let this go for a while and hopefully it just restores straight to the drive. All right, well, we've restored it successfully. I think. So let's see if we can choose it as a startup volume. Yeah, I don't think that worked right. All right, well, it seems like I was just having bad luck with SSDs. So I cannibalized an SSD from a different computer and now everything works fine. So I've installed Leopard and it boots from the SSD just fine. I have the SSD here. I have the original hard drive here. 
And then if we take a look at about this Mac, I have the eight gigs of RAM. So looks like finally we were successful. So two broken SSDs and then one cannibalized SSD later, and we have accomplished our goal. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching.